Hey, what is going on everybody? My name is Radi and today we're going to build a professional looking website using the new Elementor Cloud platform. And you might be wondering, what is Elementor Cloud? Wonder no more, my friend, because I'm going to explain it right now. Elementor Cloud is a complete solution for creating websites. This means that you don't have to worry about the technical stuff. It includes the hosting, the WordPress installation, the Elementor Pro, and on top of that, they handle everything from CDN, SSL, and your daily backups. Never forget your daily backups. Also, it's very easy to add a custom domain name so your website looks professional. All right, I hope that you're ready and welcome to this elementary school lesson. Let's jump on the computer and get started. If you wish to follow along and get the Elementor Cloud, I will paste the link in the description below. I would appreciate it if you use that link. Alternatively, feel free to go to elementor.com, features, cloud, and click on get a cloud website. This will lead you to this section of the website here, which will tell you what you're getting. And all you need to do is click buy now and complete the following form. Obviously, you'll need to pay for it, which is $99 USD. And that's pretty much it. The next step would be to start working on our website. Once you complete this form, you're most likely going to be transferred to the dashboard, which looks just like this. And then you can start creating your website by clicking on this blue button here. All right, let's start creating our website. Click on create cloud website here. And this will ask us a couple of questions. The first one is name. I'm gonna call mine Ruddy just to keep it simple and press next. Now this is gonna give us a domain name that we can use. Uh, this one is ruddy.elementor.cloud, which is absolutely fine. But as you can see here, you can always purchase and add a custom domain name later once you're happy with your website. So let's press next because I'm happy with Ruddy. And this is gonna ask us what kind of website do you wish to create? And today I'm going to be creating a business slash corporate website. So I'm going to click on this here and let's press next. Now inside here, we have a couple of options. We can either start blank by clicking the button here, rather start from scratch, or you can use some of the really useful wireframes in here. They're completely empty, but you have a lot of sections that you can use. So you can always click what's inside just to view it, just so you know how it looks like. And as you can see, you can just replace everything with the content that you like. But what I want to do is I want to look for something a little bit more complete that it would be easier to get started with. What I'm going to do now is click here on the drop down menu and select all types. And this will give us a few more options. And under all categories, I'm going to choose health and wellness. So let's choose that. And then I was thinking of using this here to start with. So you can just click on what's inside and view the website, how it looks like. So this is going to be the desktop version. You can see how it's going to look on big phones or tablets. And then this is on mobile phones. So it looks pretty cool. I really like the design and I'm going to start with this kit. So all you need to do is go back here and just select start with this kit and we should be good to go. All right, it took a couple of minutes, but it looks like we're ready to go. So let's click, let's go. Awesome, you're one click away, got it. All right, now that we are on the dashboard and we have our website set up, you can see that I actually have two of them. This is a local installation and this is the cloud one that we just created. So I could actually filter it here, hosted by Elementor. And as you can see, this still stays, which is great. So let's hover over this and click on manage this website. Here at the top, we have the name of the website and the URL where you can visit your website. But if you want to have a custom domain name, you can do that. If you scroll down a little bit, you will see manage domain names. So what you can do is you can go and purchase a custom domain name that is a little bit more professional, and then you can connect it to Elementor Cloud using the A record here and the C name. 
I'm actually going to show you how to do that at the end of the video. I think I have a few domain names that I'm not using so I can connect it and see whether it works. Scrolling down a little bit more, we have site lock. Basically, when you create your website, your website is locked to the public and search engines. So nobody can view it. And the reason for this is because you might want to work on your website first of all. And once you finish it, you might want to unlock it to the world so everybody can see it. And to unlock it, all you need to do is go here and turn this off. And basically it's going to be available worldwide. And this is a pretty cool feature here, the pin code. Essentially, you can give this URL to somebody. Let's say you have a client or a friend that you want to show your website to. And let me open it in another browser. So I'm going to open it in Edge here. Let me paste rally.elementor.cloud. And as you can see, we have, sorry, this website is hidden right now. But if I was to give my friend or a client this pin code here, they can enter the website and view it as it is. So that's a pretty cool feature. And let's have a look at what else we have. If you scroll down a little bit more, we have backups. So backups are generated every 24 hours. And the first backup here, the automatic backup, which is automatically created when you create your website, is actually bare bones everything. So a brand new WordPress installed with Elementor installed, but no themes or anything like that is basically uh, brand new and you can restore it if you if you have a mess up you can restore it to this point and then you can install a theme if you wish or you can build a custom one of course one great thing about this is that you can create backups as when you need to and also you can export them and delete them that's pretty cool and scrolling down a little bit more we have debug and troubleshoot which we're not gonna touch on today but basically you can reset your wp login attempts and you can turn on the WordPress and script debug if you ever need to. So that's a pretty cool feature to have. And now let's go back and jump into the website. First of all, let's have a look at how the website looks like. Now I'm going to open a new tab. As you can see, we have a header here. This is supposed to be the logo we can replace. Uh, we have really nice hero image. We have uh, like three columns here and so on it's looking really professional and you can change all the content on here pretty easy and i don't want to just install this theme and leave it as it is i want to show you how you can modify it a little bit change the branding change the fonts uh colors and so on so what i'm going to do now is start with some of the website settings like main website settings and then we'll look at the branding fonts and how to edit sections, add sections, and so on. The first thing that I want to do now is go to edit with Elementor and click site settings. As you can see here on the left side, we have design system, theme style, and settings. Basically, the first thing that I want to do is look at the site identity. If I click on this, from here, you can name your website. So I'm just going to pull it ready with a capital R. And here you can add your website description, which is quite important. You can add your website logo, site five icon, and so on. If you don't know what site uh, five icon is, it's basically this icon here. If you see the Elementor one, it has a really nice circular one. Basically, this is the site five icon. And also, if you were to save this website on your mobile, for example, the site five icon will appear as the icon on your phone, which is pretty. So I'll definitely suggest you to make one and add it. I've already have a logo that I can use. I created earlier, which I can upload for you if you wish to use it. But what I'm going to do is choose image. And I'm just going to drag the logo from here. As you can see, this is an SVG, which is what I would suggest you use because uh, basically with SVG, even if you open your website on retina screens, it's going to look very, very sharp. Of course, you can use a JPEG or a PNG, whatever you have. And also the other thing is with SVGs, they're super small. As you can see, this is seven kilobytes and I can probably make it even smaller. I don't know if I minify that, but seven kilobytes is pretty good. So insert media and this should update the logo on the header here which I'm going to talk about in a minute and it should upload, sorry, update the logo here at the bottom in the footer as well. So let's save this. First of all, I'm going to update it. 
And I think that we're going to have to refresh this. As you can see, the logo is looking nice here. And if I scroll down, you will see that the logo appears in here. And I'm going to show you why in a minute. By the way, usually you don't have to refresh. Uh, when you edit uh, content here, I will show you in a second how easy it is. Is basically you can click on anything and just change the content. So that's all pretty cool. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is the design system. So the design system is here at the top, design system. Um, and if we click on global colors, these are kind of like your branding colors. So as you can see, this is the accent color, the yellow here. And we have the secondary color, which is the purple here. Let's say that we want to change the secondary color here from purple to something else. Maybe we can make it slightly dark purple, as you can see, just like so. And or even black, if you wish. I think that actually looks pretty cool. So let's leave it not. I don't want it to be super black, but just kind of like that. I quite like this. So if you wish to change your branding, you can do it from here. And this is all, as you can see, it's kind of like global. Um, you only change it once and then it kind of changes everywhere, which is ideal. That's awesome. And by the way, you can do that for the text. You can do that for the accent color and so on. And also you can add custom colors if you wish to. So let me update this just so we have it saved. And let's go back and have a look at the global fonts. All right. So here you have global fonts and basically you have two sections here. These are your system fonts, kind of like the default fonts for your website. And these are your custom fonts. Now that means basically if you wish to make a section with a different font, for example, this is your hero section here. And if you wish to change to make a unique font for the hero section, you can create a custom font. And I'm going to show you later when I click on this, that uh, this is actually probably using hero main title. So if I was to change this, let's say from 110 to 100, as you can see, it changes straight away. And this is how you change it. Of course, you can change the font family here. You can change the weight. You can transform it, style it, and so on. You basically have pretty much everything that you can think of, which is great. And the same goes for the other ones. These are the medium titles. These are the small titles overland hero titles and so on. All right. And that's pretty much everything that I'm going to cover from this section. As you can see, you have a lot more options here, such as changing the layout, uh, the light box, page transitions. You can add custom CSS and there are also some additional settings. Feel free to explore them and obviously customize them the way you want. But now I want to start from the top and have a look at some of the sections, such as the header and the footer. Let's go back. And let's close this. And what I want to do is I want to hover over in here and click edit header. The other way of doing this is to go to the website, edit with Elementor and click on header. This will be exactly the same thing. So I'm just going to close it and focus on it here. So, okay. As you can see, when I hover over the elements, I can actually click on them, as you can see, and start typing. So it's literally that simple to update the content. And if you wish to change positioning on something, you can literally just drag around. Obviously, this is right align and this is left align. So it looks a little bit odd. But if I put it back, as you can see, you can mess around with that. You can remove sections as well. If I was to click on this, I can literally remove it. But I don't want to do that. And a very helpful tool here is the navigator here. If you look at the bottom left corner, then you will see this navigator. And this basically shows you all the containers inside the element that you've selected. So I am on the header at the moment. So this is the whole header. And we have a column. And inside the column, we have an inner section with two columns. And then we have another inner section with two columns. This is actually quite useful to learn how things are built so you can explore your website, look how things are built, and then you can start building your own custom sections if you wish to. So the reason that the logo updated earlier is because if I click on the logo super quickly, you see that we have a site logo element. So this is actually coming from the WordPress and not just uh, an image. You can drag an image element and upload an image, 
but this is a little bit better because he updates everywhere as when you update your website identity. The other thing that I wanted to show you in here is the menu. So if I was to click on the menu here, as you can see, we have enough menu element and this comes out under the content here on the left side, comes out with layout and under layout we have menu. So this is actually using a menu called menu one. And if you wish to change your menu items, your pages, basically, you have to go to the menu screen. So if I'm going to, if I click this, this is all going to open on a new tab. And this is basically in WordPress under appearance menus. And then here you can create different menus. For example, this is menu one. You can create one for your footer maybe and so on. These pages were actually automatically generated when we chose our theme. But of course, if you went blank, you probably won't have them. You probably have just one page, but you can create more pages from here, which we'll have a look at soon. For example, if I wanted to remove this hash eight, no title invalid page, I can literally click on here and remove it. If you want to rearrange something, you can just drag like that. And that's it. If you want to have drop down menus, you literally just drag, let's say the content. I want it to be drop down menu under pricing. I can just literally drag it, drag it like that. And that would be a drop down menu as soon as you save it. So I'm going to save this and let's open the website in another tab. All right. And as you can see, the menu that the menu item that we removed is no longer here. We have the drop down menus, which are pretty cool and so on. So that's how easy it is to, so that's how easy it is to edit your navigation bar. We go back. One more thing that I wanted to show you is the tablet mode and the phone mode. So what happens is if I click here on responsive mode, you will see that at the top here, we have this responsive bar where if we click on the tablet, it's going to shrink the website down and show us how it looks like. And if we click on mobile, it's going to show us how it looks on mobile. And of course you can modify things as you wish to. So for example, on mobile, you might wish to hide this section here. So you would probably, where is it? This section here, you'd probably click on it. And as we are here on minimum height, you can do all sorts of stuff. For example, if we go under advanced and if we go responsive here, you can literally do hide on mobile and this will be gone. This will be hidden. And you can do the same for tablet and then you can just go desktop and it'll be there. So that's why it's highlighted as great, just so you know it's there, but it's hidden, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to put it back and update. All right, let's go back to desktop. Now let's have a look at how we can modify the footer. The footer is exactly the same actually. So if we go under edit with Elementor and if we click footer and now we can focus on foot on the footer, as you can see, this is the whole footer here. I do have the navigator open just because it makes things a little bit easier. But essentially we have the, again, the site logo here, which ma updates automatically as soon as we change the site logo. We have some text in here, which means that we can add whatever we wish and change it on the fly here. And we have some text with icons. And just to show you how easy it is to change the text here, you can literally just click change the text. And if you wish to change the icon to something else, you can literally click on here on the items. And then you can either choose an icon from their library, which is quite nice. You can choose font awesome, which is quite famous font awesome, solid and font awesome brand. Uh, so this is the library, but you can also upload your own SVG if you wish to an icon, if you wish to, and you can link everything however you like. So well, that's pretty cool. Of course, you can mess the order around like so, and it does it on the fly. All right, and the other thing that I wanted to have a look at is this form here. So if you were to click on this form and edit it, basically this is kind of getting in a way, but what you can do with the navigator is put it here to the side and that will just uh, stick there, which is kind of helpful. If you have a bigger screen, that can be quite nice. And then if we click on the form here, edit it, you will see that we have different fields. So of course, this is only like email signups. So name and phone is absolutely fine. You can maybe add an email address from adding a new field here. Whoops. And then you can modify however you like. 
But what I wanted to show you here is some of the actions. So for example, you can uh, select different actions here. So you can collect submissions on the back end of your website, or you can connect it with MailChimp or something else that you wish to use, like ConvertKit, um, MailerLite, Slack, and so on. And if you want to connect MailChimp to your website, what you have to do is go back to your website, click on the dashboard, and then go under Elementor, Settings, and then Integrations. Inside here, you can integrate your website with Google Maps, Recapture Free, Facebook. Here is the MailChimp. All you need to do is create a valid API key, which they show you how to do. And that's it. It's as simple as this. So it's pretty simple to connect your forms and make them work. Um, let's have a look at what else do we have. So that's how easy it is to change the header and the footer. But there is one more thing that I wanted to show you. So let me close this. I don't think that I've made any changes in here, so I'm not going to update it. But what I want to do is go here and go to the team builder. So the team builder is actually a pretty cool section. As you can see, we have different side parts that you can build and reuse. So for example, let's say the header. If we click on the header, this is the current header that we're using. But for example, what if you want to create a different page for some reason, maybe it's a sales page, a funnel page, and you don't want the header. Well, you can actually create different headers from here or you can remove it on a specific page. That's not a problem at all. But they also have a lot of choice. So if you click on add new, this will open the element uh, library. And as you can see inside here, we have so many different options. So for example, let's say, I mean, this blue one looks pretty cool. So you can literally click to view it. And this is how it looks like. It's quite a simple one. And if you wish to use it, you can just press insert and that will install it for you. And you just have to activate it on all pages. So let's see one more super quickly, maybe a more complicated one like this one here. So this one has a nice bar at the top that shows you the opening times, email, contact and social, social media. Uh, that could work quite well as well. So if you want to use it, insert and that's it. So the same goes, so the same goes for the footer here. And if I click on the footer, as you can see, they have so many options. I mean, some of them are great. Like let's have a look at this one here. So that looks great. Obviously I would have to change the image to something else that fits this website, but the options that they have are pretty good. So let's see on pricing. So as you can see, they have a lot of pricing plans here. Pretty cool. What else do they have? Single page services and so on. So these are sections that you can insert, use and modify pretty much anywhere on your website, which is amazing. So let me close this and let's have a look at how we can edit some of the sections on our website. I'm going to go back to the website now. And as we are on the home page here, let's have a look at how we can edit some of the data inside here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click edit with Elementor this time and leave it. All right, now this opens the Elementor editor here on the left side. So here on the left side, we have the Elementor element. Basically, all you have to do is if you wish to have a video or a button or a heading or a text, all you have to do is just drag it on the page where you want to position it. So for example, if you wanted to have a little bit more text underneath the heading, all I need to do is drag this here and I'm done. I can literally just start typing whatever I want. Hello, let me just paste some text. And then if I wish to center this, I can just go to style and then alignment. Obviously, it does take a little bit of time to get used to the columns and rows, but this navigator here helps a lot. So if you ever want to understand how things are working, then you can have a look at this. We have the hero, we have a column inside the hero, then we have a heading and we have another heading text that we just added and a button. So that's how it's work. And obviously you can edit everything. Let's say we want to edit this text here. I can just click on it and just say, make this year your year, like so. And that's it. It's as simple as that. If you wish to change the button, all you need to do is click on the button. And here is the link. You can do it through here. You can click on the link options. You can make it open in a new window. 
you can make it open a pop up from here if you wish to. Uh, so just have a look at the options. As you can see, actions pop up, light box, uh, contact URL, and so on. So you're going to have to explore a little bit and mess around. As you can see, you, you can actually add an icon if you wish. Uh, at the moment, we have this icon set up here, but if you want to change it to anything else, you just click on an icon and insert it, and this will add it to you. It's literally that simple. And if you were to have a look at the website on mobile, let's have a look at the tablet. Cool. And if you look at mobile, this is already looking pretty cool as well. And that's how you modify things on Elementor. All right, make sure that you save any of the changes. So I'm going to click update super quickly, and that's going to save the page for us. And the other thing that I wanted to have a look at is how to change the background image. Try to select the whole section here, or you can just click on the hero here. And then if you go under styles, usually this, this is where the background images are stored. So what I want to do is let me show you how we can replace it. So if you want to replace it, just choose image. And then here is the original image. So what I would suggest you do is use this size of the image here if you're gonna if you want to replace it just because um this they've already kind of figured out what uh, is a good size for that hero image and as you can see this image is tiny it's 68 kilobytes uh, so make sure that you optimize your images as much as you can all right if you go to unsplash.com and let's search for gym and maybe let's try to use this one here so i'm gonna click on it download free I'm going to download this image and open it in Photoshop. All right, let's create a new file. And this is going to be width of 1920 and 970. And then I can add the image that I just downloaded here. So this is going to be here. Like, so let's just extend it a little bit. And the reason I'm doing this is basically I want to make sure that this image is as optimized as it can be. So what I'm going to do is file, export, export as. And then inside here, you can mess, let's say JPEG. And inside here, you can mess with the quality. And I mean, that's 169 kilobytes. I bet this can be further optimized, but this is pretty good for the example. So I'm going to export this, call it hero. And now let's add this image inside here, drop it. Give it an old text if you wish. I'm just going to put hero and insert media. So as you can see, now the image is updated. I can literally click update, remove this. And let's go to the website just to see how it looks like. And that's it. It was that easy to update. So this is actually looking a little bit odd. So I'm going to remove it. Let's go back, click on it, and then just press on the edit button and delete. That's it. That will remove it and I can update the website as it is. So if you scroll down a little bit, the same goes for the other stuff. As you can see here, we have an anchor icon, and this is basically where if you press this down button, it's probably linked to this here, and it's just gonna have a smooth scroll. Let me try it. So if I click on this button here, boom, it goes down here, and this is what this anchor does. And you can actually create anchors from the Elementor menu here. If you go here, you can just search for anchor and just drag one if you ever want to do that. So I'm not going to do it, but that's how it's done. And inside here, just to have a look super quickly, we have three columns, as you can see. Let me open the navigator. So we have an icon section with a column that is kind of like centered on a page. We have the anchor, then we have an inner section, and then we have three columns, and each column has an element, uh, uh, element called icon box, which you can actually modify. So you can modify the icon, title, description, link, and so on. Of course, you can just drag them around and position them the way you want. So I'm not going to do much more here. As you can see, these are fairly simple to do now. So or if I wanted to change the title, I just click on it and change it one, two, three, and it's job done. Of course, if you wish to make this a little bit longer you can do it's not a problem here we go and then if you wish to change any of these images simply click on them and upload the one that you want all right 
as you can see, I don't want to keep on and going with this because as you can see, it's super simple to modify stuff. But what if you want to create a new section? Okay, let's say that you want to create your own custom section instead of using the awesome templates from here. So of course you can click on the templates and view them and insert them. But what if you wanted to make something of your own? What you can do is you can click on this red button here. Obviously we're at the bottom of the page, just above the footer. You can click here, or if you wish to add the section above another section, literally you can just click this plus sign here and it's gonna add the section. Also, don't worry if you add the section here at the bottom, you can always move it up and down and position it where you like. So I'm gonna add a new custom section, click, and this is gonna ask you how many columns do you want? So you have one, you have two, three, four, and you have big one on the right and small one on the left, and you have the opposite and so on. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use this one here, the first one, so one column. And as you can see, we just have one column which is in the middle of the page. One thing that I want to do straight away is fix the padding between this section and this section because they're too close. So what I can do is click here, click on the section actually, and then go advanced. And as you can see, we have margin and we have padding. So if you wanted to use padding, I can unlink this so they don't all follow the same number. So I can do maybe 80 pixels and let's do bottom of 80 pixels as well. And as you can see, this makes a little bit of space for us. Let's go to the element uh, elements here. Let's say that we want to add a countdown timer. So I'm going to look for countdown timer and I'm going to drag this countdown in here. Of course, we we'll probably need to modify a little bit. Uh, it looks like it's broken, but what it is, is I think that it just has a white background. So what I'm going to do, select on it, go to style. And for the background color, we can just change this to the uh, potentially either the secondary color to make it black, or we can just make it fully transparent like so. And I think that works quite well. I mean, these things can be a little bit smaller as well. I mean, they can definitely have a little bit of space between them, like maybe like so. I think that looks cool. Of course, you can modify the date here. You can modify pretty much everything here. If you go to styles, as you can see, if you click on content here, we have the digits, uh, color and topography. So these are the numbers here. So potentially I can click on text and I mean, I don't want to make them too big, but whatever. something like this. That's similar, but as you can see, you can modify them maybe like that. Is that going to be okay? So yeah, you can modify them and you can change the labels as well. Uh, maybe, I mean, I do like the labels right now, but here we go. These ones look pretty cool as well. So you can modify pretty much everything. And if you wish to save this, update it and let's have a look at our website. All right, let's scroll down. And as you can see, our section is actually looking pretty slick here and it's working. And one really cool thing about this countdown timer is that you can set an action after expire. So if I click on this, you can set a redirect or you can hide it or you can just show a message. So you can set a custom message here. I'm going to say, please, please subscribe. So in 33 days, 23 hours, 40 minutes and 14 seconds, it's just going to say, please subscribe. Let's update this, refresh your page just to see how it looks like. And that's pretty cool. So as you can see, this is how easy it is to add sections. They have a lot of stuff that you can use and modify and build your website super quickly. Let me quickly walk you through some of the pages. So for example, let's say the contact page. So this was already created when we inserted the template. Let me click on it. So as you can see, We'd love to hear from you, contact us. This is already done very professionally. Of course, you can mess around with it and make it better or the way you want it to look like. But what I wanted to show you is that those pages are under, if you go back to the dashboard here, I'm going to open a new tab, close this. And those pages are under here. So you can literally go under page. You can click on edit contact. And if you wish to change the name of the page, it's literally here at the top, so you can change the name. But also when you change the name of pages, 
make sure that you change the permalink URL slug. So this is what it will appear on the URL. So that's why we go uh, ready.elementor.cloud slash cloud uh, slash contact. So this is what the slug is. Of course, you can set up other attributes in here and so on. Let me show you that you can modify any of the pages. So for example, you can just click on edit with Elementor and it'll be exactly the same as the home page. So we can click here and start modifying it like so, no problem. And if you scroll down to the contact form, I kind of showed you how to do this, but if you click on the form, you can literally set what you want the form to do. So you can change the button here, the styles, you can collect the submissions. So collecting submission will be saved to element submissions. And if you click on it, this will go to here basically. So every time you sign up, a user signs up, you will have all your submissions in here. If you wish to, you can just change it to whatever you like. Literally, you can change all of the settings here, uh, email, subject, message, from email, from name, reply to, metadata, uh, send as HTML or plain text. It, it's really powerful. Action after submission, you can connect it with MailChimp or whatever you wish. So yeah, it's pretty powerful. You can do whatever you like here. And the last thing that I wanted to show you is if you wish to create a brand new page that has nothing on it, but you want to build it yourself. The reason this is important is because there are a couple of choices. All right, now let's have a look at how you can create a custom page and add it to the menu here instead of using the predefined designs from Elementor. So in order to do that, let's go back to Ruddy dashboard and let's click on pages and then let's click on add now. I'm going to call this one expert coaching. And, and here on the right side, there are a couple of things that we need to do. So template, we need to select this as element of full. We need to publish this and publish again. And then we need to click edit with Elementor. And this will create the page. This will set up the page and you can start using Elementor as you can see. Obviously we have our header and the footer which are set uh, to look exactly the same on every single page for consistency reasons, but you can turn them off if you wish to. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to show you how to create a very basic section. As you can see, our header is kind of getting in the way and this is because our header is set as fixed and when we scroll down, it stays on the page like so. That's not a big issue. All we need to do is create a new section here. I'm just going to use this uh, one column from here. And because the section starts from the top, then we need to push it down a little bit and I can do this with padding. So I'm going to go to advanced and then under padding, let's unlink these values and let's just say 300 or something like that. And as you can see, this moved the section down and also maybe we can do it bottom 300 as well. And let's add an element just so the page is not empty. So I'm going to put a heading here. And I'm just going to say expert coaching. and center align this. Let's save this. Let's go back to the website. And I want to add this page here on the main menu. So to do this, I'm going to go ready. And this is a shortcut. You just click menus. All right. And on the menus, you can click expert coaching, which is the most recent page that we've added. Add to menu. And then I'm just going to drag it above contact here and save. Cool. Let's remove this and go back to the website. And as you can see, we have expert coaching here. And if I click it, we have a fully working page, of course, with just a title on it, but that doesn't matter. It's looking cool. So that's how you build pages. Obviously, I would strongly suggest you that you spend a little bit of time uh, getting familiar with Elementor. Once you get used to it, you can actually build pages really quick and you can do pretty much anything that you wish. It is pretty convenient tool. So I'll definitely suggest you to check it out. And the last thing that I wanted to show you is how we can unlock this website and add a custom domain name to it. To unlock the website so everybody can view it, you can just click here, site lock mode is on, and then change this setting. Close this, and I'm going to close this. So scroll down here, 
and just turn the side lock off and now literally our website will be published and people can view it under this URL here. But what if we wanted to add a custom domain name? Let me quickly log into my 123reg account and I'm gonna try to connect one of the domain names that I'm not using currently. Okay, let's have a look at how we can set up the domain name now. First of all, I have a domain name under 123reg that I'm not currently using. I registered it for just social media purposes, but I never end up using it. So I'm gonna use this for this demonstration. Under 123reg, and by the way, all the other companies are exactly the same. The process is exactly the same. Only the user interface will be different depending on which company you're using for your domain name. This is the domain name that I'm going to use, readythebrand.com. So let's click manage. And one thing that you need to make sure, this is very important, is that your name servers, if I, I'm gonna click on this just to show you, your name servers are controlled by this company here. So at the moment I have the NS server set to 123reg, which means that 123reg is, has control of this domain name. And if I go back, then we need to click on manage DNS. As you can see, A record, MX record, C name record, TXT, and so on. So I'm gonna click on this super quickly. And if we click on advanced DNS, this is where we need to add the record. So I'm gonna go back to Elementor. Let's close this super quickly and let's add a custom domain. So the A record here, I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna do, first of all, I'm gonna do add A and put the IP in here, add. And then I'm gonna do, and then I'm gonna do www, type A and put the IP address in here, add. And the last thing that I need to do is the C name. So the C name, let's copy this and let's put www. And then the C name is gonna be ready.elementor.cloud, add in here. And hopefully if we go back to Elementor, got it. And let's put the domain name. So this is readythebrand.com. Set ready the brand as primary domain set. Great. Yep, that's all cool. Over the next 48 hours, we'll check that your domain is available and the DNS records are updated. Then your site will get an SSL certificate. When your domain name is ready, we'll notify you by email. Okay, I'm gonna click done and hopefully in 48 hours this is gonna be working. I mean, I can test it right now, but I'm not sure if it's gonna work. All right, I don't think that it's gonna work straight away right now, but what I'm gonna do is pause the video and come back to it later on and show you that it's working. Okay, just now, two minutes or three later, I received the email that my domain name was successfully added, as you can see. So let's go to the website and have a look. So this is the element domain name, rally.elementor.cloud. And now let's go to the other one that we just added. So rallythebrand.com, press enter. And boom, the website is working under my custom domain name. And by the looks of it, we have a fully working SSL certificate, which is valid till uh, 2023, awesome. And that's it, the website is working. Let's click uh, expert coaching or contact and so on. I'm not sure if I'm gonna leave my domain name under this because it's a little bit random, but obviously as you can see, it's working. Maybe I can leave this one here working instead and that's pretty much everything. Anyway, that's everything from this tutorial. I couldn't make it as detailed as I wanted to just because there is a lot to cover but Elementor is quite a popular platform out there. So if you ever need to find something, I'm sure that you'll find it on the internet. And that's pretty much everything for me. Thank you very much for watching. If you consider using Elementor Cloud, please use my link below. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe, like the video, and I will see you in the next one.